Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today we're checking out a 2023 Lexus RX 350H in the luxury trim level. This vehicle sitting on 235.50 Bridgestone tires wrapped around an impressive 21 inch alloy wheel with a gloss silver finish. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors on all four wheels. The name of this color is Nori Green. I think I'm saying that correctly. And uh, pretty impressive color, especially nowadays. Uh, the, co the green color was kind of popular in the 90s. And it seems like it's coming back because I saw like a BMW in this similar color. And, and I saw this one now. And it's just a pretty impressive green. If you're going to have green, this is probably one of the best greens, I guess. Uh, so they did change the grill quite a bit here for the new style. Uh, on the RX 350H and pretty impressive. Uh, so it has the body colored portion coming down here and then, then it goes into like the silver portion and then there's a some black portion there on the edge. There is a camera here in the center. Emblem serves as the radar adaptive cruise control as well. There's also parking sensors integrated here and here. There's headlight washers. There's also another parking sensor here on the outside. They do a really good job and they work it together with the head with the camera system. So you can actually see uh, what's around the vehicle with the camera system. And if there's something close to the vehicle, it'll show it, display it on the camera itself as like a little bar. It's pretty neat. Now the headlights, this has the upgraded triple beam LED headlights and it is pretty impressive you got to see it at nighttime I have a full night video on this vehicle uh, it also has the LED fog light and cornering lights so the fog lights down here so there's the fog light and then there's the cornering light here looking at the profile of the vehicle uh, we saw that it has a little bit of black there in the front um, but that black is also here at the base of the doors as well and there in the back uh, but it doesn't extend around the wheel well. The wheel wells are a body colored, which looks pretty good. It doesn't look too, you know, like sport utility vehicle uh, with all this cladding on the side of it. It has body colored handles, a proportion of the side mirrors also body colored, and then you have a gloss black pillar right here. This vehicle actually does have some tint. Uh, this first, I think this is the first press, press car that I've seen that has the front windows tinted. So it's just slight tint there on the front. And then the back is the privacy glass. And it looks pretty good kind of solidifies all this area including this little black area here as well kind of makes it swoop uh, like a swooping motion there with that trim this is what the key looks like and i can't really say that this is my favorite key fob of all time um but uh but this is it and uh the the, the hole for the the keychain to go through isn't very big so it gets bound all the time and it's i don't know it's just not like my favorite key fob uh, but you can slide out the physical key and, you know, just kind of put this away so you can have your key separate from it. Uh, but it's a full proximity key system and it works well. It has the lock unlock, the ability to open up the lift gate there and a panic button. So as long as you have the key with you, uh, the way this works is, is it has a little lock sensor right here. And then it has the vehicles on. That's why it's not locking and it's beeping, which is a... a <laughs> which is kind of like a thing nowadays is uh, nanny beeping constantly on new vehicles. Anyways, you got the, the lock button there and then the, uh, to unlock the doors, it senses the key and it unlocks the door, but it's not actually like a physical um, switch. It's just like an electronic switch here. Uh, it doesn't have like, you don't pull this whole thing and, and pull it out and, and it's not a mechanical system. It's just a button here and it electronically unlocks the door. So right here, you just press it. So you could just kind of reach in and just kind of press right there on that, on that button, it'll unlock the door. Pretty interesting, and it's on all these doors. So all four doors have that sensor. Uh, you can lock the door and you can unlock it. As long as the key is on the outside of the door, it'll allow you access to the vehicle. These doors go all the way to the bottom of the vehicle, completely covering that threshold area, keep, keeping it relatively clean. And check it out the inside of this vehicle is really nice uh so it has it has like this black 
brown, and then this white or the cream color. And that's the part I really like, the cream color. Uh, it kind of brightens everything up. And look at the contours here. And you see this contour goes up, and you can see it contours into that right there. So when you close the doors, and we'll look at it when we get inside, uh, it looks really nice. Kind of has this nice wrapping without being too claustrophobic, and it looks good. It has the Mark Levinson sound system. There's one of the speakers there, and this is like a suede material right here. This is like a vinyl type material, all soft touch here, here, here as well. This brown is like a vinyl type material. Uh, there's even a felt lining in the bottom of this handle, so you can utilize that as a pocket. Little pocket right here as well. And we have a power window switch, door lock controls, and then this button is actually to open up the door. So it has an electronic button to open the door. Now there's also a mechanical pull it twice to open the door. So as a backup to get out of the vehicle, you do have the mechanical alternative. Now down here is also, uh, right here is hard touch, but right here is also soft touch. Then you have a large pocket with a removable little kind of plastic floor there so you can clean it and put it back in. There's a threshold with a nice little Lexus seal plate there. And check it out. For a passenger seat, look at all these electronic controls here. Uh, you can go up, down, tilt. you got a thigh extension here. You can tilt the back, and then you have a four-way lumbar adjustment. So yeah, these are pretty, <laughs> a lot of adjustments, especially here for the passenger side. Uh, so it has the leather trim seats with the suede here, heated and ventilated seats, and the perforations uh, kind of have a little bit of a pattern to them, looking pretty cool. You have the more suede there on the back, and there on the sides of the headrests, as well as the headliner too is a suede type material. There's the floorboard. You can see the floor mat hooks in place. Plenty of leg room here in the front. Uh, this is a soft sur touch surface here. This is also soft touch, kind of rubbery soft. Has a locking glove compartment. Felt lining on the inside of the glove compartment. So we have more of that rubberized type of material all the way up here. And it has like different layers of the dash. There's also some ambient light, uh, accent lighting that goes in there as well. You can see it at night video. Uh, you can see it in detail on my night video. You see the opening here in the front, uh, lots of room. Getting in and out of this vehicle is no problem. Uh, it has a nice height off the ground. So like when you walk up to the vehicle, it's easy to get in and out of in that sense. Uh, the swing of the door in the front is nice. And then the swing of the door is pretty dang good here in the back. Um, and of course you have lots of room as well. Uh, a little bit less than the front, of course. This right here kind of slants. This kind of gets in the way a little bit, but overall getting in and into the back, it's not really an issue. So the back door, very similar styling. It does have the shade, retractable shade here, in addition to the privacy glass, but very similar styling as the front. You notice this little button down here. This is for lowering these seats. Uh, so there's a button here and in the cargo area for lowering power lower like power folding down the seat so you can add to your cargo space. Uh, and these seats are very similar styling as that we saw in the front with the suede and all that stuff. And it has the latch system for car seats and the little latches are right there. Easy to get to and they're kind of hidden as well. There's an armrest cup holders pop out here get a little storage area right here nice and soft it's pretty cool so yeah back here is pretty nice as far as uh, amenities it has the pockets on the back of both front seats this is kind of like a soft touch material here and you can see there's a little bit of a hump there in the center but not a big deal overall. Back of the console has USB charge ports, climate controls, and these are three-stage heated and cooled seats back here as well.
Take a look at the back of the vehicle. It has the body colored shark fin antenna right here. And it has, you see this uh, spoiler right there. It has a third brake light in it, but it also has a, a windshield wiper in there and it swings down, which is really nice. Really handy having that out of the way. Uh, it doesn't um, get caught up in car washes. And also it doesn't get frozen position when there's snow. Um, so typically if it's down here, then it has to lift up a bunch of snow and all that stuff. This swings down, pushes the snow off the vehicle, uh, that kind of thing, or at least that's the idea. Has a really impressive uh, LED tail light back here. You could check out my night video. Has LED everything basically. There's parking sensors across the back. You can see them integrated here, here, kind of go. They're fairly well integrated into the design of the vehicle, unlike the backup camera, which is kind of tacked on offset underneath the E, way over here, just kind of tacked on with the tag. <laughs> Not all that great, but that's just the way they chose to do it. Now down here is a reflector. There's no lights down here. Um, then it has like this metallic uh, accent there at the bottom. A lot of layering going on on this vehicle, both in the style, but also in the controls and just overall, it's a lot of, it's like a layer, layer, layer of type video, uh, type vehicle. It's interesting. So it has a kick sensor so where you can, you know, dance and kick your foot and open up the vehicle. You can also use the key or you can push a button under here. So under here is... You can see this light um, and then it has this hard touch surface here if you have all the seats occupied with passengers this is the cargo space that you have uh, there's also this shade um, that kind of retracts like this it's real easy to get off track here all right so like there that's what it does um, and then when you retract it this way this flap still just gets in the way a lot and if you lift it up then it kind of blocks your visibility so, you know, it's handy to keep people from looking in and stuff and keeping the sun from shining it back here, but I think there'd be a way of designing that a little bit better. Also, it limits your height quite a bit. Anyways, uh, there is a 12 volt power supply here on the left side, bag holder. You could put a net pocket back here if you want. There's also a light over here, subwoofer, there's tie downs. Here on the right side, there is another bag holder. You can flip these out, in and out these bag holders. There's a light. Glad to see two lights anyway. And then there is a 1500 watt, 120 volt power inverter, three prong. This is something like you'd find in your house. Uh, so 1500 watts, that's like, you know, that's like a regular 15 or, or yeah, 15 amp outlet type capability here. So that's pretty impressive. Okay, so like if you want to run a coffee maker, you can do it, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so you can fold those seats down. Uh, it's a 60 40 split. It's actually, uh, you can fold down this part separate, like each part separate in order to add to your cargo space, depending on your needs, you know. So you can have a combination of passenger and cargo space uh, by folding down these seats. Okay, so this lifts up. You have a full full diameter spare tire. There's also places for tools there. Pretty good looking spare tire too. And then the jack is right here. And of course additional area space around it I guess. You can kind of cram some more stuff. More tools or whatever. This lifts up and that's where you'll find your 12 volt battery. Which is not your high voltage battery for your... Uh, for your hybrid system. And there's a, another compartment here for you to find uh, fuses. Like I said, you can fold these seats down. You can take out the shade, which is a good thing it's removable. And you can have a wide open area uh, back here for cargo. The only thing is that the back seats don't go all the way down. They're kind of a tilt, even when they're at their lowest position. So you can use these buttons here Let's go ahead and do the right one, because the right one, let's see how far it goes. Because sometimes it'll hang up with the seat in front of it and it won't go all the way down. Okay, so this one's going all the way down. 
All right, so let's go to the do the left one. And we'll see if it actually goes all the way down. Because it's going to probably hit the driver's seat and then goes back up if it hits it. Okay, so it hit the driver's seat and went back up. Now, this shade might be getting in the way now. So now we're kind of stuck where we got to go over there and adjust the front seat. It'd be really nice is since the driver's seat is powered, you would think that it would just kind of move it out of the way for you. Move it forward, allow it to go down, and then move it back where it was. Um, but this is showing the limitation of the convenience of having a button here is that if it doesn't work all the time, you still got to go around and adjust the front seat. Then they've got to adjust the second seat in order to get it to work. But you see even this one on the right side is all the way down, but it's not completely flat, but it's still a lot better than, uh, you know, you can still add to your cargo space big time, but it's just not like a flat floor or anything completely flat. You can also fold the center portion there if you just want that. Like if you've got a long box or skis or something like that, you can just fold that separately from the other two. You have to do it manually though. Lowering the power lift gate, we have two buttons here, one to lower it. The other one is to lower it and lock the vehicle. It has a locking fuel door. And the fuel door is here on the driver's side. And it has a traditional cap, tether, and a place to hang the cap while you're pumping gas right here on the door in that spot there. Kind of goes right there like that. The start button's here, and you just get in, hold the brake, push the button to start it on, uh, to start it up. And basically what's gonna happen is, typically the engine won't start. Uh, you'll just have a, a ready indicator there and the vehicle will be ready to drive and sometimes the engine will start sometimes not since it's a hybrid here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat you see the floor mat hooks in place just like the other side there's the accelerator brake pedal nice big footrest here on the left side let's take a look under the hood to lift the hood there's a latch a little bit to the right of center right in here and just kind of reach in lift it up to the left Basically, this is what you're doing right here. Uh, but it basically the hood stays up for you, which is nice. So it has the insulation on the underside of the hood. You notice it has uh, three different latches. The center, the center one is just the catch, uh, the like the this catch right here that you release. But the other two are for the that you release underneath uh, the dash there. So it actually has three points of contact there, which is pretty good. Now there's seals across the front, sides, and back. There's also insulation everywhere, keeping it relatively quiet and controlling the airflow. Firewalls insulated. Even these uh, those these strut towers have like a like sound deadening on them. It's pretty interesting. The blind spot indicator is here on the side mirror, right in there. Now the inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side except for it has a few more buttons. Uh, the power windows are here and it's one touch up and down, front and back. And the back windows are solid, solid glass, they go all the way down. But the front windows are laminated, real thick laminated uh, pieces of glass here on the side. Door lock controls, side mirrors are adjusted here and it also has power fold side mirrors. So you can power fold them in, power fold them out, or you can put it on automatic and they'll power fold when you lock the vehicle. So the driver's seat basically is just like the other side, except for the because the uh, the the, the passenger so so uh, well equipped that the driver didn't even one up. Usually the driver's seat one ups the passenger in some way, but basically four way lumbar adjustment, thigh extension, tilt, all that stuff is the same. So so yeah, we got excellence on both sides. Heated and cooled seats, looking really nice. To the left of the steering column, there's this little pocket right here. I guess you can put your sunglasses or something like that. It's felt lined. Uh, neat little little tiny glove compartment is what it looks like. And we saw the, the release for the fuel door. There's the open up the power lift gate. You have three presets for the power seat. Dimmer switch for the interior gauges. Uh, reset the trip here. You can also uh, switch between the odometers, the odometer and the two trips. And you reset those independently. And then it has a tilt and power tilt and telescoping steering column. 
I'm sitting in the driver's seat. I'm six feet tall and I have the seat all the way back and all the way down to give you an idea of the potential leg room here. And fairly decent. I mean, I actually have to pull the seat a little bit more forward uh, when I drive. So even if you're a little bit over six feet tall, probably should have no problem driving this vehicle. Lots of leg room here on the left side. On the right side is decent, uh, but this is nice and soft padded here. So if your leg rests against this, it's not really a big deal. It is quite soft. And that padding goes all the way across here. Okay, so the steering wheel, pretty interesting. It has this bamboo accents here, here, and here. And then the rest of it is quite firm uh, here on the sides. It does give a little bit, but, um, but it's fairly comfortable. Now, even with that bamboo there, it still feels comfortable uh, on the rest of it. So it doesn't wrap the bamboo all the way around the steering wheel. It's just more of an accent here, and where you actually grip it uh, is the soft areas. So yeah, I think the steering wheel is pretty good. It does have the paddle shifters here on the back side if you want to change the speed ratios. And it has some buttons here on the steering wheel and <laughs> that's pretty interesting. Uh, you have the these buttons here for the radio, turn the volume up and down. And then here on the right side, you have to cruise control and to turn it on. And then this button to turn on the lane keep assist. But you'll notice the rest of the buttons are not labeled here and here and this is very important if you want to buy this vehicle you have to know that you are tied to the heads-up display with these buttons uh, so if you're the type of person who gets in a vehicle and immediately turns off the heads-up display then don't get this vehicle because you have to have it because that's how you know what these buttons do is basically what you do is you just press your finger on there and just kind of move it around and on the heads-up display will actually show uh, kind of pop up and show what these buttons do uh, And also if you press the bottom the bottom button it has a whole nother uh, area of selection Same thing with the left side. So I move my hand here on the left side And then we can have the different options here go to the more and then it flips it to more options So it doesn't always like you if you just take and just press the button uh, Most of the time it's not going to do anything you have to put your finger on there have that menu system pop up and then make the selection and then press it. Uh, so it's just a little bit of an extra step, a little bit of a learning curve. Most people should have no problem with it uh, as far as like actually learning how to do it. Um, it's just whether you like it or not, that kind of thing. Okay, so the windshield wipers front and rear are located here. It does have the automatic function there in the front, rain sensing windshield wipers. On the left side, is the turn signal but it also has your headlight switch uh, so you have DRL off automatic parking and headlights on and then you have your fog lights can be controlled here and then there's a button here on the end to turn on and off on or off your automatic high beams good to know where that button is just in case the automatic high beams are not working properly okay so this is the screen right here and uh, it basically just shows you the digital speedometer and it shows you the status of the hybrid system engine coolant temperature fuel gauge there on the right and then it has the uh, the status of the lane keep assist system and different features as far as as far as your uh, adaptive cruise control now if we go we can change this information on the heads-up display. I'm actually using the heads-up display and changing through and getting more information here. So as I scroll to the right on the heads-up display, I can change what information that lands here. And I just rest on the one that I want. The original, this is a blank screen, but the original one we had was the uh, driving support. The next one is blank, next one is fuel consumption, Average speed, elapsed time, energy monitor, audio, navigation, G-force meter, driving support. So it just kind of loops back to the original. So the adaptive cruise control um, view is the one I like to have there. Uh, so yeah, so you have to use these buttons here. You hit the more button, and then it, and then you can change uh, up here what you want to have.
You can also adjust your HUD position as well. Here's the different drive modes. There's normal, eco, sport, and then you can customize one. Sport looks pretty cool with that red. Uh, but yeah, you can adjust those by and hit that. And then you have the drive mode, heads up display, you have different things here. If you want to turn off the heads up display, you can do it, push that button. Uh, you have your different drive modes and stuff, but you can turn off the heads up display. I have it under frequently used, but you can see it right here. Heads up display, you have the different modes here. Standard, minimal, full mode, and then you can turn it off here. And when you do that, uh, it doesn't have the heads up display, but when you put your finger on these buttons here, it'll show up here and give you the information on the screen instead. Uh, so you can actually turn off the heads up display and still use these buttons. Also go into the settings here and you have three different, what they call meter types. So we have number one, number two, and number three. So there's different views you can have here on the screen. This is pretty cool. Stop lights display under the settings. When you turn that on, when you look here on the screen at the bottom, if I put the brake, push the brakes, you can see those red lights turn on, letting me know that I'm holding the brake or pressing the brake. Pretty interesting. All right, we already saw the power button, and here is the touch screen. And pretty impressive size touch screen and the, and the clarity and everything uh, looks pretty good. So it has these icons here on the left side. The first one would be the navigation. You'll notice it, it's, a, it's a cloud navigation. So you will need to install the app on your cell phone, connect and uh, subscribe to the service and all that stuff in order to get this these functions here. It's not just included with the vehicle and you drive home and you know it automatically has it uh, on, the, on the ride home. You know, you have to set all this stuff up. Now your dealership can help you do that, so that helps out. Um, and then the next icon is the phone. So whatever your phone's, whatever's, whatever, this is not just your phone, this is any audio. So it could be the, it could be the radio, it could be um, whatever. Whatever your radio is doing, pl playing audio, uh, AM, FM, satellite radio, that kind of thing, or USB port, or your phone. Um, so any audio uh, related things here. The next one is specifically your phone and you can connect to different devices and it can have them in a priority system as well. Uh, the next one is about your vehicle. So you have current and then history. So this is the current drive, average miles per hour and all that stuff. And then you have the fuel economy and this is basically what I've been getting pretty consistently. And the next one is the uh, settings. You can go in here and set up the vehicle the way you want it. So those are the different icons that stay here on the left side, and they stay there. But you notice the screen is actually extended down here as well. So you have the climate control buttons here, and then you have the, these knobs that are actually on the screen, which is pretty cool looking. And uh, so you can see it has the temperature as I turn the knob. And this is the volume knob, but there's the temperature for the passenger, and then the fan speed. And then the seat controls, heated steering wheel. It's a two-stage heated steering wheel. It's pretty nice. Uh, the front defrosters, rear defroster. The rear defroster also turns on the heated side mirrors as well. All right. We also have the park-in feature. So it automatically helps you park. And then there's the button to hit for the camera system. The camera system is awesome. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and hit the, the view button. Now when you hit it when you're in park, it just gives you this view here that's kind of not all that great. Uh, it's kind of neat. It gives you a kind of view around the vehicle. But, you know, it's not as useful as the other um, option there. And you can, you know, like you can... Let's go ahead and get the other view here. This is like from inside the vehicle, and you can kind of look around. Not really... Uh, these particular views aren't that great, but when you put it, let's go ahead and put it in, in, in reverse or let's go ahead and put it in reverse. Yeah. Now this is very useful, uh, because we can see all the way around the vehicle and also we have a color matched vehicle, which is nice. 
And we can see behind, we have active guidelines as well. So as I turn the steering wheel, those lines uh, turn as well. It gives us a center line. Since the, the camera is offset, we have to be informed where the center line is. And then you can see where this, the vehicle is going to swing out there as well. Uh, so yeah, really nice camera system. So let's put it in drive, and we can see in front of us, we still have the top-down view. We have the front view. Uh, we can have these icons here to get different views. So this is kind of neat because it gives us a three-quarter view when we're turned. When we're going straight, it'll give us a like a over-the-car looking view. And then we turn to the right, it'll give us a view to the other side. On all views, top-down or this quarter view or whatever you want to call it, as we move, it memorizes and fills in and stitches what it saw. So it looks like the vehicle's transparent. So it's trying to give us a better idea of where we are. See those lines that go underneath the vehicle? Uh, we can see it where we are in relationship to those lines. And even both on both uh, views, both on the top down view and this right here, gives us that ability. And so this is really, really handy. Uh, especially if you're trying to nail the parking spot or whatever, whatever your your, your use is. Uh, this is really handy for me, especially filming the vehicle, uh, moving it forward or back, getting it positioned to the sun and all that stuff. So yeah, this uh, this camera system is great. And you can see the stitching is does pretty good. Uh, the, it's able to follow those lines and keep them straight and all that stuff, even though it is dealing with very, you know, wide view camera angles and all that stuff. All right, so let's go. Well, no, actually, before we go continue, uh, this button right here, the automatic function, you could turn that off, but it, I like to have it on because when you come to a complete stop and you get, or you're just creeping slowly, you're creeping slowly, you're getting ready to stop, it automatically turns the camera on. Um, so as I move uh, and I'm driving and then I come to, a, I get, start creeping into a parking spot, it automatically turns the camera on. So I don't have to turn it on. It just automatically does it. And then that way I can, you know, have the benefit of the camera as I'm, you know, pulling into a parking spot or a tight space or wherever. It's really handy. So these vents are pretty cool. Uh, you can aim them up and down, left and right, and then you can turn them on and off here. These little scroll wheels right there, which are rubberized and easy to operate. This is also rubberized right in here, this little pad. Uh, it's a good place to put your cell phone and other things. Uh, it's not a wireless charger. There is a wireless charger in here though. And there's two USB ports there. There's USB ports here, USB-A and USB-C. There's your wireless charger and more space in here. It's kind of a kind of awkward position to get to because you're like, you know trying to reach in there but it is a good nice space to kind of get things out of the way and put your cell phone uh, out of the way as well but the reception isn't all that great in there especially when you close it up and you don't have like a really strong signal uh, you know but it depends uh, and of course you can use the Bluetooth system to send and receive calls and all that stuff uh, but you have more of that bamboo looking uh, material here looking nice cup holders little articulating arms also this this particular cup holder pushes down and you can press this button and lift it up so if you have a tall cup or something you can push it down so it accommodates different size cups this way and also different size cups this way it's pretty cool and it does have the little rubberized little bottom pieces that you can clean and put it back in which is nice also, the, the good thing about pockets and different things having rubberized uh, bottoms is that if you put like change or something in there, it's not rattling. So when you have pockets or anything that you can put stuff in and it's a hard plastic at the bottom as you're driving hitting bumps, it just gets annoying sometimes. So the shifter is basically like the Toyota Prius in a way. Uh, you move it over, up to go to reverse, over, back to go to drive, over, hold it for neutral when the vehicle's in drive if you want to go into standard mode uh, just press and hold this down and then the standard mode is now activated so it's showing we're in fourth gear so now we can you know change to the gears using the pedal shifter and then if we want to go back into drive we just go like that all right so this is the brake hold feature 
just holds the brake for you when you come to a complete stop when it's turned on EV mode you're just kind of asking the vehicle nicely if it can stay in EV mode and just drive without having the engine run um, if you turn this on then you know like a lot of times you're like it's not available you know battery is too low or if you're just driving it's gonna automatically turn the engine on sometimes traction control off button default is on but if you need to spin tires for whatever reason this is an all-wheel drive vehicle so if you need to spin tires you can turn that feature off don't recommend doing it unless you know what you're doing and then this button right here cycles on the like an off-road type button so when you turn it on it has this little little tree and little off-road type stuff um, so you know if you're just letting the vehicle know that you are going on an off-road situation like you're not on a road you're like on a dirt road or something or you know maybe going through the grass or you know this isn't really an off-road vehicle but you know it's just kind of telling the vehicle that to expect some more slippage okay so this is the armrest nice and soft very soft like a pillow soft uh, it's kind of very soft and then it bottoms out to like a rubber soft so it's there's no bottoming out it's really soft all the way down now it opens up in two different ways so it has a button on this side so you can access that side or this side so it's like a double hinge uh, and then it has a felt lining compartment here it's pretty cool and it's basically the junk drawer of the vehicle the rear view mirror is also a rear view camera so there's the rear view mirror and then you can flip it up to the rear view camera and it has the ability to adjust the brightness in different uh, tilt up and down, move left and right, that kind of thing, using this little menu system. And then it has the home link garage door opener controls here on the left side. And where this is located, it's actually in the glass, um, and it's at the top of the gla rear glass back there. And so if you turn on the windshield, the rear wiper, you'll see it passes in front of that camera. So it keeps it relatively clean. So if you can't see very good, you can use the backup camera. I mean, you could use the rear wiper to clean it, um, which is nice. All right, so we have some lights here, just kind of tap lights here. Here is a more specific to this side, this side, and then these are you know, both sides at the same time. Uh, and then you can have them turn on with the door or not. So little indicator light there. And this is for the shade for the sunroof. This is to open and close the sunroof and then tilt it. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, it also has a roadside assistance emergency button here as well. So the visors are a suede type material, very soft. They feel like a squishy type toy or something. And um, really, really nice and comfortable feeling, I don't know. Uh, it has a little place to put your registration or something there. Um, but it has a mirror with a light that turns on. Uh, and this actually matches the the headliner. The headliner's not quite as soft uh, as this, but um, it has the same matching type surface material and, and, and look and everything. Now it does slide out as well. And we have most of the same things here on the passenger side. Of course, as the air on the passenger side, that's like essential. Okay, so we have this massive sunroof. Check it out. Look at that. The front part moves, the back part is fixed. So it's a panoramic sunroof. And I have the shade all the way back, but the shade covers up 100% of the light. Uh, so let's go ahead and tilt it up. Press the button again to tilt it down. Now we can slide it back. Push it again. All right, as far back as it goes. All right, let's go forward. And then the shade, the separate button here for the shade. Close that up now. I'll go ahead and close the shade so you can see that it covers 100% of the light and it has that kind of same type material as the headliner, kind of matches in sheen and texture and all that stuff. And 100% of the light is now blocked. Looking at the visibility in the back, um, you can see it has this little window right there because it has a huge uh, pillar back there. So, uh, but it's not really a big deal. I mean, just kind of looking over my shoulders, 
driving the vehicle I hadn't really had an issue really with visibility and most vehicles with, with all the technology and stuff it, it's rare that you the visibility really causes a problem because you're able to compensate with the camera system blind spot detection system work cross traffic alert uh, parking sensors all that stuff so so yeah it's not really an issue but it's still good to know about the visibility just in case you know and also vehicles have these pillars here and here and here so a lot of the new vehicles uh, some of the visibility issues are more in the front sometimes than in the sides than in the back because you kind of take for granted that you have visibility in the front but not always this vehicle does have significant upgrades here and I'll have close-ups of this window sticker so you can see the difference uh, now it does have the upgraded headlights so it's very important to understand that this isn't just a base luxury trim it does have upgrades Thank you.